In this tutorial, I'm going to go over airport traffic and service and airspace information for the VFR terminal and sectional area chart. And keep in mind that I'm only going to go over the symbology in this tutorial. I'm going to have an entire series of tutorials dedicated to airspace itself, so this won't include all the information about it. Um, so if we start at the top, we'll see it says only the controlled and reserved airspace effective below 18,000 feet MSL are shown on this chart. All times are local. And that's of course because it's always class A airspace above 18,000 feet. So starting at the top we've got this blue solid line for class B airspace. B is blue. Here we have class C airspace which is given by the magenta and it says mode C, C FAR 91.215 and the Airman's Information Manual. Now keep in mind that we had blue and magenta for controlled and uncontrolled airports. That doesn't translate to these uh, lines in terms of airspace. Class C is controlled airspace and you need permission to enter it so don't assume that this means uncontrolled. Next we have class delta or class D airspace which is the blue dashed line. Here we've got the ceiling of the class D airspace in hundreds of feet so this would be 4,000 and a minus ceiling value indicates surface up to but not including that value and there would be a minus sign in front of that. Here if the class E airspace extends down to the surface we've got a dashed magenta line. Here we've got a shading of magenta for class E airspace with a floor at 700 feet above the surface. So on the shaded side the class E airspace goes to 700 and on the solid side it goes up to 1200 feet. Then we've also got a blue shading for Class E airspace. This time it goes to 1,200 feet on the shaded side and 14,000 feet on the solid side. If we move down over here, we've got a boundary which indicates uh, floors of Class E airspace greater than 700 feet above the surface. And so here we see 2,400 feet MSL and 4,500 feet MSL and it says Class E airspace exists at 1200 feet AGL unless otherwise designated as shown above. So the default is 1200 and these are differentiations away from the nominal 1200 foot uh, Class E airspace. Now if we go down it says Class E airspace low altitude federal airways are indicated by center line. We can see here Intersection. Arrows are directed towards facilities which establish intersections. Here we can see the arrows which establish the intersections. The total mileage will be given by the blue numbers in the box and that's the mileage between nav aids on direct airways. Here we can see it's the Victor 69er airway and here's 132 degrees. Moving down, we see Class E airspace, low altitude RNAV routes are indicated by center line. And here we have the Tango 319. We've got the Grant uh, RNAV waypoint and name. And this type of uh, symbology for these airways will become important when you start to transition to instrument flying because instrument maps will almost only have airways to it. You're not going to see terrain features. Finally moving towards the bottom we've got these kind of uh, hashed lines here which are blue and that's prohibited, restricted, and warning areas. Canadian advisory, danger, and restricted areas. Here we've got an alert area or a military operation area or MOA is given by the magenta. We have special Airport traffic area is this diagonally hashed solid blue line and it tells you to see the FAR 93 for more details. We've got the ADAS or Air Defense Identification Zone which is the magenta with this staggered dotted blue uh, shaded boundary above it. Mode C transponder is given by a solid magenta line. FAR 91.215 are the aim again. Here we've got a very bold dashed magenta line for national security area. Here we've got a terminal radar service area or TRSA. It's given by this gray 
And then military training routes, or MTRs, are given by the lighter gray line and the route identifier. So these are the basic symbols. And next we'll look at some more specific information to military training routes. And then we'll look at some actual stuff on the chart. Here we can see an additional note on military training routes, or MTRs. In particular, it says all IR and VR, or instrument and visual MTR military training routes, are shown and may extend from the surface upwards. Only the route center line, direction of flight along the route, and the current route designator are depicted, but route widths and altitudes are not shown. So that's an important note. Next we see it says that since these routes are subject to change every 56 days and the charts are reissued every six months, you are cautioned and advised to contact the nearest flight service station for route dimensions and current status for those routes affecting your flight. Now we also have that routes with a change in the alignment of the charted route center line will be indicated in the aeronautical chart bulletin of the airport facility directory. And then finally, Department of Defense users refer to the Area Planning AP-1 Bravo military training routes North and South America for current routes. So now let's look at some of these airspace elements on the actual sectional chart. Some of the actual airspace elements. Here we can see we've got uh, P-40, which is Camp David, which is prohibited and given by the blue hashed bordered line. And then we've got R-4009, which expands if the president is there, and that's given by the dotted blue lines. We've got this thinner line with dotted blue line for the class delta, which extends from the surface to 3,200 feet. And for instrument approaches, we've got this magenta dotted line, which means the class E airspace uh, goes all the way to the surface. Here we've got a, a magenta shaded line, which is solid, but shaded, and on the... Uh, lighter side, it's Class E airspace up to 700 feet and Class E airspace up to 1200 feet on the hard edged portion of the line. If we go up to the Harrisburg area, we can see the Harrisburg Terminal Radar Service Area, which is kind of like a pseudo Class B or Class C airspace, but you don't need permission to enter it, but you can get radar services. And it's kind of like an upside down wedding cake as well. It goes from the surface to 6,000, 2,700 to 6,000, 36 to uh, 100 to 6,000 on the outside fringe. And if we go over here, we can see the Philadelphia uh, Class Bravo rings. This is your classic upside down wedding cake, B for Bravo, big airspace from the surface in the center and cuts out as it goes outwards. So surface is 7,000. 1,500 to 7,000, 3,000 to 7,000, and we can see the solid magenta line going around for the mode C veil because you need mode C transponder to go into class Bravo airspace. Here we can see a class Charlie airspace, which is like a smaller version of a class Bravo from the surface to 4,100 at the center, and then 1,300 to 4,100 on the outside. We can see an alert area, which is given by the magenta hashed line over here. Um, we can see warning areas along the ocean. We can see a uh, federal airway over here, which is Victor 139. Here we can see the air defense identification, or ADAS, given by the magenta with the dotted lines as you come into the continental United States. And here's that uh, kind of jagged picket fence uh, line for the floors of the Class E airspace, and we can see here it says 5500, and here it says 1700 MSL. There's an interesting one out by the ocean, because we've got this warning area, which is given by the blue hash lines, but we also have this Class E transition, which is the solid uh, border which fades, and on the light side, the Class E is up to, uh, I believe it's 1,200 feet, and then on the outside of the hard edge of the border, it's to 14,000 feet. And let's see if we go over here. We now can see we've got a military operation area, or the Farmville MOA. We've got the Picket 2 MOA. And we've got just an absolute ton 
of military training routes, which are given by these gray uh, lines that look like airways, just really litters the map all over the place. Um, and I believe here we've got the DCSFRA, which is given by the blue uh, dashed line, and then the DCFRZ, which is given over here, which is a prohibited area. And apart from that, I believe this map is very dense. It has almost every type of airspace element uh, you could imagine within it. So it's, it's very good for getting your proficiency um, with airspace uh, elements very, very quickly. And it, you'll have to deal with this if you're actually flying in this area. So it's in a way, it's a very good area to uh, learn airspace as you're flying. But keep in mind that if you ever do come to the DC area, there's a lot of airspace that can get you into trouble in terms of busting an airspace and getting a violation very quickly. But other than that, it's that easy and 